as a leader, your role is to establish good relations in your zone. It means that you sometimes need to have the difficult conversation. So, do you know how to give negative feedback in a way that will give your associates the opportunity to improve their behavior and performance? Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenu from IMPI. We are here to help remove anxiety from the leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant to this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So let's answer the question. How do you give negative feedback to your associates in a respectful way because you want to see an improvement in their behavior or performance? This is the context. One of the foundations of building good relations at work is to let each employee know how he or she is doing. You want to do that regularly and often. Also, sometimes you will spot wrong behaviors that affect the employees themselves, but also the team and production. You need to act. Problems don't go away. Now, I personally feel it can be difficult to give negative feedback. There are many possible reasons to that. For example, you think the negative feedback will damage the relationship. And as a consequence, the employee will become defensive, angry, or resentful. You are concerned about causing negative emotions. Your associate becomes upset, discouraged, or demotivated, which may ultimately decrease productivity and morale. You want to avoid personal discomfort because you tend to be conflict averse. But avoiding the confrontation is one of your worst decisions. People's problems don't go away smoothly. You abdicate your leadership responsibility and you send the wrong signal to the team. You probably develop a reputation of a weak and unfair leader. I know. It takes courage and truthfulness to engage in this kind of conflicting situation. That's why you are a leader. Finally, you lack the skills or experience to give negative feedback. That makes you anxious. Let me help you here. We are going to follow the continuous improvement steps, that is, plan, do, check, and adjust. Because at the end of the day, giving negative feedback is part of the habit of continually improving your team's behavior and performance. Okay, plan. Plan what you want to say before you have the conversation. Think about what you want to say and what specific behavior needs to be addressed. Bear in mind, the objective of the activity is to understand the person and help them change their behavior. Choose the right time and place. Find a quiet and private location where you can have a conversation without interruptions. Make sure that you have enough time to discuss the issue thoroughly. By choosing the right time, you ensure that your emotions are stable and under control. You are now ready to act. You are going to attack the behavior, not the individual. Consider these steps. Step 1. State the problem or negative behavior based on facts. Step 2. State the effect on the team of the problem or the undesirable behavior. Be factual. Your opinion is not useful here. Let's illustrate these first two points with three examples. 1. An employee is usually late to meetings and comes unprepared. John, I've noticed that you've been consistently late for our meetings and often seem unprepared. This is causing frustration and waste of time for your colleagues that come on time and prepared. This is also causing delays in our work and can make it difficult for us to meet our deadlines since we can't solve issues during the meeting. Also, this behavior projects an unprofessional image of yourself. 
Second example, a manager is autocratic, arrogant, and manipulative with his associates. Sipo, I've observed that you have been taking a very autocratic approach in working with your team members. You sometimes come across as arrogant and manipulative, which can be discouraging for your associates and unproductive. Third example, an employee performance is degrading. Linda, I've noticed that your performance has been slipping over the past few weeks. We have discussed expectations and the deliverables you are responsible for. But it appears that you're not meeting them consistently. This is placing additional strain to your colleagues and it also affects the performance of your section. Now, step three. You request more information and listen. You want to get the facts and give the person the opportunity to explain herself. Don't argue, don't interrupt. Try to get the whole story. You can ask, now tell me what is happening. Then step four, ask what the person intends to do to address the issue. You place the ball in their camp to offer a solution. This is a good place to come to an agreement and an action plan. You can ask, tell me, what do you think you could do to change this behavior? Take note of the improvement plan and agree on the follow-up. Finally, step five, we affirm the person's worth to the team and their contribution. It could go like this, Linda, I value your work and your contribution to our team. I know that improving on this behavior will help you become a better employee and add even more value to the team. The next phase is check. You follow up on the employee's progress and review the action plan. It could be during a scheduled one-on-one -on -one session or even in a more frequent scheduled meeting. When you follow up, you develop in the employee a sense of accountability. You demonstrate that you care. Also, the follow-up sessions provide an opportunity for positive feedback. Finally, adjust. If the outcome of the action plan is not favorable, it's time to have another negative feedback session and take different actions. Whether the outcome is positive or negative, it is an opportunity for you to reflect on the experience and become a better leader. So let's recap. As a leader, your associates need to know how they are doing. Giving negative feedback is part of your responsibilities. This method comes handy in your leadership toolbox. You plan the session, do it, check on the change of your associate's behavior and adjust when necessary. In the do phase, which is the session itself, you may follow these five steps. Number one, state the problem or negative behavior based on facts. Two, state the effect on the team and production of the problem or the undesirable behavior. Three, request more information and listen. Four, ask what the person intends to do to address the issue. And five, we affirm the person's worth to the team and contribution. Last word, remember that you want to give an opportunity to the person to change her behavior and not for you to offload your resentment. Keep calm and carry on becoming a great leader. And this is the good quote for this episode. The Dalai Lama wrote, the best way to resolve any problem in the world is for all sides to sit down and talk. Isn't this beautiful? You may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to transform your organization. I can help you. If you would like to meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching, send me an email at wwd at impi.solutions. I will gladly start a conversation with the first three viewers who contact me. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, lead well 
when you give negative feedback, 